Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to create and configure Windows failover cluster on Windows Server 2022. Servers in a failover cluster can function in many different roles such as file server, Hyper-V server or database server. They can also provide high availability for various other services and applications. Typically, a failover cluster has a storage volume that is physically connected to all servers in the cluster, although only one server at a time can access the volumes in the storage. The main reason for setting up a failover clustering is to ensure that if a server in the cluster fails or experiences an issue, another server automatically steps up and takes its workload without interrupting the service. The active workload is transferred from the failed node to a healthy node within the cluster. This seamless transition is called failover. In this video, you will learn how to set up a Windows failover cluster using Windows Server 2022. This will be a two-node cluster with one shared disk and a cluster compute resource. First, let's understand the taste lab we will use in this video. We have single domain active directory forest named msftwebcast.com. This is our domain controller named srt22-dc01. This VM will also work as an iSCSI target. A dedicated server can be set up as an iSCSI target server. Click on File and Storage Services, then click on iSCSI. I have created two iSCSI disks for this demo. VDisk 1 with the size of 10 GB and VDisk 2 with the size of 1 TB. Right click the iSCSI target and select Properties. Go to Connections tab. We can see the existing sessions from our member servers SRT22-Node1 and SRT22-Node2. If you don't know how to configure iSCSI target and iSCSI initiator, please check out the video on how to configure Windows Server 2022 as an iSCSI target server. The link to that video is provided in the description area. Now, let's go to Member Server VM. This VM is our Windows Server 2022 member server that has been joined to our domain. The AppQDN of this server is srt22-node1.msftwebcast.com. We have two NICs on this VM, one for production and the second for cluster communication. You can also add another NIC dedicated for accessing iSCSI storage. Right click on Start menu and select Disk Management. Let me maximize it. Confirm that both disks are available. This will be the first node participating in the Windows failover cluster. Let's go to second member server. The AppQDN of this member server is srt22-node2.msftwebcast.com. Let's right click on Start menu and select Disk Management. Let me maximize it. We can confirm that we have two disks on this server as well. So we can say we have the same settings as Node 1 on this VM. In the first step, we will install file server and failover clustering roles on this member server. Let's use Windows PowerShell to do so. Right click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. At PowerShell, type cmdelete install hyphen windows feature, fs hyphen file server, failover hyphen clustering, hyphen include management tools. Hit enter key to install file server and failover cluster rule services on this member server. The installation has been started successfully. Let's go to Node 1 Virtual Machine. On this VM, right click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. We need to run the same cmdelete on this server as well. Again, type cmdelete install hyphen windows feature, fs hyphen file server, failover hyphen clustering hyphen include management tools. Hit enter key to execute this cmdelete. 
the installation process has been started successfully. This will take few moments to complete the installation. Installation has been completed successfully and a restart is not needed. Now that the required roles and features are installed, we can start configuring the cluster. Go back to disk management, right click the disk 1 and select online. Right click on disk 2 and select online. Again right click the disk 1 and select initialize disk. Select the GPT partition style for the both disk and click OK. Right click on the unallocated space of the disk 1 and then proceed to the end to create a new simple volume. Again right click on the unallocated space of the disk 2 and then proceed to the end to create a new simple volume. We have successfully created volumes on both disks. Before we create the cluster, we need to make sure that everything is set up properly. Go back to Server Manager, click on Tools and select Failover Cluster Manager to open it. Let me maximize the window. Right click on Failover Cluster Manager and select Validate Configuration. Click Next on before you begin page. Enter the names of the two machines that you plan to make the new nodes for the cluster. For example, if your planned node names are SRT22-node1 and SRT22-node2, enter those names and select add. You can also select the browse button to search active directory for the names of the existing nodes you can use. Once both nodes are listed under selected servers, select next. Select run all test and then select next. On the confirmation page, we can see the list of tests the service runs for validation. Select next and wait for the test to finish. This will run all the necessary validation test. This process may take several minutes depending on your network infrastructure and the number of nodes you have chosen to add it to your cluster. Once testing is done, the summary page should appear. Validation is completed. We can see we have few warnings in a report. Click the view report button to open the failover cluster validation report. We have some warning in system configuration. Click on system configuration. Click on validate software update levels. We have warning about validating software updates on both node, which we can ignore in this test lab. If you have any error, you have to resolve that error and then you can create the cluster. Let me close Microsoft Edge web browser and click on finish. Now we are ready to create a cluster with our existing setup. Right click the failover cluster manager and select create cluster. Click Next, type SRT22-node1 and hit Enter key. Again type SRT22-node2 and hit Enter key. Once both nodes have been added, click Next to continue. Specify a name and IP address for the cluster. Cluster name is going to be SRT22-CLU01. Let's specify the cluster's IP address which is going to be 172.1872.58. This name is for administrating the cluster only. Click Next. After reviewing the cluster configuration, click on Next to start the cluster creation. Within few seconds, a new Windows cluster will be ready. Verify that the report retains successful results. We can see the message. You have successfully completed the create cluster wizard. Click finish. We can see the summary of our windows failover cluster. Expand cluster and click on nodes. We can confirm that both nodes are up and running. Expand storage and click on disk. Disk 2 with 1 TB is available for storage and the other disk is being used as a disk witness. So a two node windows failover cluster with disk witness is created successfully. One of the next steps would be to add a role to the cluster. 
For example, it can be a scale out file server, Hyper-V server, SQL server or ETC. In this example, I'll create a simple file server cluster. Let's right click on roles and select configure role. Click next. From here, you can select the role that you want to configure for high availability. In this example, I'll select file server. Click next. Remember, during the installation of Windows failover feature, we have installed file server role on our both node. In this example, I'm selecting file server for general use. You can also select scale out file server for application data as well. Click next to continue. Specify the name for client access point. That's queue name SRT22-FS01. And we also have to specify the IP address, which is going to be 172.18.72.59. Click next. We have to select the storage to store our shared folder. We have only one disk for storage and that we are selecting. You can click on this plus sign to see the file system and the storage. Click next. Perfect. Now we are ready to configure high availability for a file server. Click next to continue. The file server cluster has been created successfully. Click on finish. Under roles, we can see the cluster name SRT22-FS01 and status is up and running. Currently, this role is hosted by SRT22-Node1. Now, for example, if you want to create a new shared folder on that file server, you just have to select the cluster name, right click on it and select add file share. Now from here, select the profile for this share. In this example, I'll go with SMB share quick profile. Click next. Uh, let's select the path. On F drive, we'll create a one folder with the name share one. Select the folder, click next, click next again. Uh, I also want to enable access based enumeration on this shared folder. Now here, one more added option is enable continuously availability. Click next. We are not going to customize the permission at the moment. I'm simply going to hit next. Click on create. Perfect. The share was successfully created on our file server cluster. Click on close. So we have configured high availability for our file server as well as we have created one shared folder for testing purpose. Let's go to our domain controller VM. Click on tools and select active directory users and computers. Expand domain name and click on computers container. Let me maximize it. Here we can see these are the R2 nodes which are participating in failover cluster. This is the name of our cluster and this is the file server cluster which we have created. This is known as a client access names. Let's try to access the shared folder which we have created on our file server. Open run menu, type unc path srt22-fs01 and hit enter key. We have the shared folder with the name share1. Let's access it. Let's create a test folder here. Perfect. This means user can access this shared folder from the clustered file server just like we used to access the normal shared folder. That's all for this video on how to create and configure Windows failover cluster in Windows Server 2022. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.